So principle number one. You already know it, right? Spend less than you earn. Much less than you earn. Be wise. Spend less than you earn. Don't say the money is not enough. I just told you. Listen, under normal circumstances, the 8,000 would have not been enough. I knew it. So that's why I wasn't interested in the list of things they were going to write for me. I knew that that would help me make an excuse. Because everything in the list will be important. But I was going to also use the miracle power of God to work things out for me. That's why you have to connect with God. What one man is spending a million naira on, you will probably do for a hundred thousand. And they'll be surprised. Once you are determined, then God says, all right, I'm with you on it. Go ahead. Then you find his seal is on it. But if you say you're going to depend on money, then you always need enough money to do everything you want to do. But depend on him. What they are needing 10 million to do, you will do with 1 million. That is part of the blessing. You find things you don't have to pay for. So don't depend on money. Depend on God. But you must follow his principle. He told you to save. He knows why. So that when he requests for it, you can give him. And when he tells you to use it, you can use it. It might be the deposit that you need. Imagine that you needed something that is worth a hundred million. And the man is ready to give it for 50,000. 50. The thing is a hundred million. He's ready to give it for 50,000. And he says, if you have 50,000, I'll give it to you. You say, hey, I don't have. Hey, hey, I don't have. Hey. Why? Because you spent everything. Then you realize when God told you to save, he knew why. We have done things with money that will surprise you. Like how much? And the values are so high. But you add the miracle power of God to it. Then they ask you how much is it? You say five letters. F-E-I-T-H. If I catch you sleeping, you will be sorry. Don't even, don't, don't even let me suspect you. <laughs> so keep your eyes wide open. Don't rest your eyes. And if you are meditating on what I'm saying, keep your eyes open and meditate. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to show you a few things on saving just now. Just, just relax. Just somebody relax. So that's the first thing. Learn to save. Start saving. No matter how much you are receiving. Start saving. Now, we'll talk about where do you save. Do you put it in your house? Do you put it in the bank? Where do you now? You are saving. But where do you save? Because that's an important thing. See? It's one thing to have something you want to say, but where do you save it? I'll tell you. Now, the things I'm sharing with you are important because, you see, they come from the Word. And that's what gives credence to them. Let me give you an example. Genesis chapter 41. Let's read from verse 25. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he's about to do. You remember when Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream? You remember? Okay. Next. The seven good king are seven years. And the seven good years are seven years. The dream is one. 
Okay? Mm-hmm. And the seventh thing and ill-favored king that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty years blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. You, you know this story. Okay. Seven thin cows eating up seven fat cows. What a story. Verse 28. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Next. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. Seven years of plenty will come. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. He says, you're going to have, says God is showing you in the dream what's going to happen, Pharaoh. Joseph is telling him the meaning of his dream. He says, you will have seven years of prosperity. After that, seven years of famine will come. And the famine will be so severe that the seven years of prosperity will be forgotten. It will consume the land. Next verse. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous, very severe. 32. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of egypt now he's given him the revelation and now he starts telling him how to solve the problem let pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of egypt in the seven plenteous years he says what save what 20 percent in the seven plenteous years next verse and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. Next. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land perish not through the famine. Next verse. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. The advice given by Joseph that they should save 20% in the next seven years ahead of seven years of famine that will come. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. So when you hear him say he became the prime minister, that's what we tell you. Because Pharaoh remained king and president. But he made Joseph the prime minister of Egypt. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy words shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Next. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures 